A very warm welcome to you all. You're tuned into Wonder Women in Sport, where we celebrate phenomenal women and their achievements and contributions in global sport, both on and off the field. We have a jam-packed show coming your way because we're doing it for the fans. Now, remember, you can join in on our conversation. Here are our social media platforms. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on Facebook, on Twitter. Follow us at Quesa Sports using the hashtag WWS or hashtag Quesa ESPN. We're on the gram as well, so your opinions there on all our picks are more than welcome. And gone are the days where uppercuts and spinning kicks are associated with sporting codes for men. Week in and week out, it's the ladies giving us the right dose of entertainment in mixed martial arts that keeps us glued to our screens. Now tonight's Wonder Woman is a former flyweight title contender and a force to be reckoned with as an athlete. The MMA fighter is also a personal trainer and a mom. And we welcome Jacqueline Demolition through Sia to studio. Jackie, very good to have you. Thank you for coming through to Wonder Woman. Thank you for having me. I'm baffled. How do you go into the hexagon, get beaten up, yet you have a love for the sport? It's actually very easy. Um, we, <laughs> we, we, we actually like go into the ring. It's, uh, you, you switch off. So you another person basically in there. When you're out, you switch on again. So then you your normal self. Mm -hmm. So it's... Um, for me to be there, it's, um, yeah. Tell me about that feeling. I mean, I can just see the, the look on your face, you know, it changes. I know you've gone to that place when you do step into the ring, but share those emotions and those feelings that you feel when you're there. Oh, it's actually wonderful. You can close your eyes if you want. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes the images come to the fore easier. It's, it's actually like really nerve wracking. So you, you feel like all stressed out, but it's like a good stress, like the adrenaline's mm -hmm. pumping and you know, okay, you got to go out there and give it your all and try and be the one that comes out on top, you know? Um, but then it's also by going in and having fun. It's not all smashing and, you know. Um, yeah, hurting, hurting, hurting your opponent. Sure. And um, basically, also, I think when you're in there, because you're in that zone, um, you like really focused and everything, that you don't actually feel the hurt. Um, you're more just thinking of how you're going to like um, apply your techniques or whatever you've learned to your opponent. Mm, mm. And uh, whatever the opponent brings to you, how you're going to get out of, out of it or around it. So, you know, there's actually like a lot of things that goes into it but it's fun it's, it's fun yeah. we're gonna unpack the fun because i'm trying <laughs> to understand it you know i'm trying to step into your shoes as our wonder woman and, and, and understand the love that you have for the sport i know beyonce has an alter ego it's called sasha fierce <laughs> is your alter ego demolition yes definitely <laughs> <laughs> so when you you go into this uh, other person if i could put it that way what happens is there a mental switch that happens does it help that you're wearing a certain color or that your hair is in cornrows like in your last fight okay the cornrows is very important because you don't want to get caught with your hair like getting stuck under like somebody's elbow or stuck under the like anywhere where you roll so uh, because it actually like when it gets stuck you you can't move and mm. then you feel trapped and even though you you know how to move your body and stuff but as soon as your hair is like stuck it's like you're stuck yeah, yeah so you don't want that so the cornrows are very important is that for your that. signature is that, is that how you step into the ring always yes i'll always have cornrows never ever without it mm -hmm. um because i think for my hair because it's so soft it um, it's the best way to like keep everything intact. You wouldn't chop this lovely long no. hair of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going too long on it. I mean, not even for the love of fighting. No. No. <laughs> no. Let's go no. back into history. I mean, take me through the Trusia household, your sister, your brother, your parents, and the sport that you played as a family or even at school. Okay, well, um, I used to be like a big athlete since small, um, loved running uh, from short distance to the long distance. Mostly um, I did um, long distance, so. Like a cross country? Like cross it? country or um, if it's athletic, uh, it's more like um, your 3000 meters or like anything in that zone. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, did you come out tops? Were you first? Uh, were you competitive? Yes, I used to like do really well with my athletics. I went to, um, I had my provincial colours and I had essays where I went to. Um, so, yeah, I've always done like really well in, in the sports, sports I've done. And um, I'm just one of those people that when I decide to do a sport, I actually like try and excel in it. So you I take it to the limit. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Exhausted. So on the sidelines, when you are participating in athletics at school, do you have your family on the sidelines cheering you on? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was very bad for me if my mother couldn't make it and be there for me to shout, standing on the side, like, <laughs> come on, Jackie, let's go, <laughs> run, faster. <laughs> you know, so if I didn't have my parents being there f and supporting me that way, I think I would have been like, not where I am and today. today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What does it mean to you? I mean, having your mother there on the sidelines, uh, cheering you on, coming to those athletics meetings. Oh, it means a lot. It's like a really big personal spot in my heart. You know, my 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 parents are like my mom, uh, especially. She's like my my hero. You mm -hmm. know, your role model. <laughs> I never told her this. So. Oh, but I guess she gets to watch Wonder Woman in sport <laughs> yeah. and know that she is yeah. your role model, and that's beautiful. Yeah. What is it about your mom and the lessons she's taught you that you cherish and 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 I use as a mother? I think my mom used to like always taught us, you know, doesn't matter what life throws at you or how difficult things get, that there's always like. A light on the end of the tunnel or like a silver lining mm. in the clouds so you have to always look at that silver lining and not at where you are at the moment and um yeah like you can hear it's like a very mm. emotional thing mm. for me so um yeah no my mom's always like been the one that's like kept us strong i mean she went through difficult life difficult um us as kids also with her went through mm. difficult times and things. When you say difficult, is there something you can share with us so our, our, our viewers latch onto that and know that they can overcome literally anything that life throws at them? It's like my mom used to, she had to work like double jobs. Um, finances were like very little, you know, so, and my dad used to like work away um, in faraway places like Malawi and stuff like that. So. My mom was always alone and she had to look after three kids alone. Mm. And then, um, so she had to, to have us have everything and still be like a happy family and have a place to live. She had to work double jobs. So I used to like follow my mom everywhere. I was like the, I clinged on to her, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I always helped her out from small and even when I was um, in primary school, I used to go to the grocery store, like spa, and ask them, can I just work, push help trolleys, out. just to like get money so that I can help my mom out? Because I always felt so like heartbroken for my mom that she had to work so hard and she couldn't like really uh, spend time with us, mm. you know? Mm. So, uh, yeah, and I think that's where me and my mom built like a really good relationship. And then later stage, it happened that my mom and my dad got divorced, you know, because of their differences that they had. And it was hard for us because my dad is also my, like, you know, I love, I'm daddy's, daddy's girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the youngest and I'm daddy's girl. And my dad is like, you know, I, I love him to bits. Mm. And I love my mom to bits. So it was that split generation like yeah. you, now you feel like you're you're a child and you have to choose between the two These parents two. Mm. but i must honestly say my parents made us understood that you know even though they split up and there's another man in my mom's life and she's got like a new husband and my dad's got his new girlfriend or wife or whatever um it's actually a blessing because mm. now you end up with having like two parents, like two sets of parents. Two sets here. of parents, <laughs> yeah. It's like a mom and dad here and a mom and dad there, and you can go visit them here the and there. Yeah. And so life is actually better, you know. Mm -hmm. It looks bad for you as a child at that time, but as you get older, you actually realize, yeah, 
it's actually nice mm. having like two sets of parents, mm -hmm. you know, mm. especially if the parents like puts in a lot of effort and makes you feel like you are actually their child yeah. when you're not, mm. you know. Mm. Mm. So you definitely bridged the gap. You got over that. How yes. did you get over that challenge of this is going to be my new life and it's not mom and dad and children under one roof? together anymore I must honestly tell you it wasn't easy and um, sometimes it's so easy you know because you you do have that fights with your with your step parents and especially like okay on my dad's side I don't have step siblings or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. but on my mom's side I do have my stepsister and we used to like fought a lot but now because we're older and we married we've got our own kids and everything we get along and mm -hmm. now it's like we like We've never been step sisters. We we are actually sisters. family. Yeah. We're sisters. Is there support from everybody in terms of the chosen sport that you've decided to take on seriously? In the beginning, there wasn't. I must honestly say they were they were like, "Wow, how can you do this? This is not for women. <laughs> yeah. This is not something that a woman should be yeah. doing." You know. But then, I'm one of those kids that I'm always. You're a middle child. You're like me. I'm always yes, challenging yeah. my parents. Always. You know, so I'm always doing everything that they don't like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rules were made to be broken, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so when they when they dis saw that you've decided to be serious, what did they say? Um, they actually started supporting me, and um, I actually took my mom to a fight once, um, and that was also when my kids went, and she she actually enjoyed it. She said, you know what, she would love to go again, and it was fun. Especially she was about you exactly on? that fight. Was she cheering you on like she did at, at <laughs> athletics? Yeah, she was actually cheering me on. But you know, there's a lot of people in the stands mm, and mm. stuff. So you, you can't actually hear who's cheering yeah, him, yeah. you know. But yeah, I know my mom was cheering like loudly. Probably nice to know that your mom is there yeah, watching and is. supporting. It that is. must have been special. It was. It was very special for my mom to be there. Yeah. We, we will definitely unpack that fight uh, where her mom was ringside and take you back to June 2017 for a title fight. Jackie got into the ring and, well, it didn't quite end up the way she wanted to. But that's coming away after the break. You're watching Wonder Woman in Sport. Don't forget we are interactive. Hashtag WWS if you are on Twitter. If you've just joined us, well, we have Jacqueline Demolition Trucier in the hot seat. I've always wanted to do that, that <laughs> voice, that ringside voice that announces that you're coming in. Let's go back to your very first fight. I want to know about the nerves and what went through your mind. Um... I think the nerves wasn't that much. Um, I started out, out with Muay Thai, so I've never been like really MMA, MMA. And um, when EFC called me up to ask me that I need to go for my pro card so that I can fight in the ring for my first fight, I was so excited to hear that, but really nervous. <laughs> and um, then when I actually like saw the type of opponent that I'm fighting, I thought, okay, it's okay, you know. And before the fight, I actually, I wasn't nervous, and I thought, gee, this chick is like a girly girl, mm, so, mm, and I'm this. not a girly girl. Yeah. And um, then when we were doing way in, I actually saw she's a bit taller than me. So <laughs> that put me at, like a bit mm. like in and the, the nerve yeah. stage. So I was like, okay, this might not be an easy fight, you mm. know. But uh, before that, I was actually sitting in the um stadium sitting there with um, my previous boyfriend and uh, we were watching the fight and Danella was actually fighting the same girl. Ah, Danella Ellisdorf, she yes. was our, one of our Wonder Women as well. Oh. And how did that one go down? She also won, okay. so she also had a good fight there. And I was sitting there and I was saying, you know what, I want to be in that ring next time, so I want to be there and I want to fight. I actually said I want to fight uh, Danella but I never got to because she's a lot lighter than me. Uh -huh. um, but now, when I think about it, I wouldn't want to fight. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> June 2017, I mean, that fight with Amanda Lino, I looked at you at the end of that fight and I didn't even recognize you. You were beaten. It was exhausting. It was thrilling to watch <laughs> and I was just watching off of my computer. 
Um, what did that title fight mean to your career and just the seriousness and the level to which you want to take this? Yeah, it was like, there was a lot of hard work that went into that fight. Tell me about that hard work. Because yeah. how many hours do you pledge to this, uh, to be as ultra fit and to have this body that you have? I was I honestly tell you, it's not the fitness and the, like, the training that is actually the hard part. It's the hard part is actually going to the club and sparring with the guys. Because... Um, I think they do go soft on me sometimes. Oh, they but do? I, th I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, they do not. Sometimes I don't hold back. So it's it's hard. And, and I mean, what's the hard part? Is the hard part getting up and going there, or is the hard part giving it your all every day? The hard part is giving it your all every day. Yeah. So it's going there, training hard, um, knowing that you know what you you're not doing this for for the fun of it, um, even though I love my training and I love training all the mm -hmm. time. But you know, you have to put in a lot more hours and a lot more effort than what you would if you're just like doing it for like, maybe like a bodybuilding show or right, something. Right, right. It's you know, not for show. This is your career. This yeah. is what you're taking seriously. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Lino at the end of that fight also said this was the best fight that she's ever had. <laughs> you spoke about the hours you put in. You're a mother as well. Yeah. You're starting your own business as a personal trainer. How do you juggle all of this and make sure that you're a present mother? Because you already shared your yeah. mom having to work so hard yes. and not being able to spend yes. time with you. Now you've got two boys. Yes. And it's, I, it's not easy to have two boys and um, doing all this that I do. Um, I'm not as much at home like I you, it would like to be, mm -hmm. you know. I would like to be more at home doing things with them but because I am always constantly training and trying to better myself for the fighting and I'm also doing it so that I can have something to like have something for my kids mm. in the future you mm. know so look what mommy did yes so how, how do you manage that though how do you manage the motherhood the training and also to let the boys know, because you bring boys up saying, don't hit women, right? Yes. And then mom gets into the ring and our mom is being beaten about. Yes. I'm sure it must be confusing. I think it is confusing, especially at the beginning, it was confusing to them. You know, they were like, exactly what you were saying that, how can you do this? You know, we're not allowed to hit each other. We're not allowed to hit other people. But I do teach them, you know, it's discipline. Like we get taught at the club or, um, if we, we Train. get yeah. training and everything, um, we get taught the discipline. You know, you fight in the ring, and that's where you. That's where it fight. That's where that's, you fight. That's right. where you fight. You don't fight outside. You don't fight anywhere. Um, even when you have verbal fights, turn around, walk away. That's a discipline that we need to have, and it's the same for my kids. I also t told them, like you know, bullying by the school. They always say, you know what, mom. Sometimes we get bullied by this kid and that kid. I said, you know what? This tell them happens. your mom is an MMA fighter. <laughs> <laughs> they say they tell the kids I'm an MMA fighter and they're like, no, they don't believe me. But anyway. What so do you say to them though? I usually tell them, you know what? Go to the teachers, go talk to the teachers. Don't sort things out yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to end up bad. So Do they understand now? Do they understand that there is a difference yeah. uh, between this fighting and, I guess, physical fighting because I don't like you or the bullying? Yes, yes, I do actually understand it. Funny enough, I'm very open and honest with my kids. I teach them from small, like, things like the way it is. I don't baby them, nothing. So I just tell them the way things are. Mm -hmm. You know, so with the bullying at school, they, they've told me actually, like, mom, you know what? We go to the teachers and the teachers, they like either take the bully side or they tell us that we're just complaining or whatever. So I said, you know what? If the teacher does that thing, then I give you permission to actually defend yourself. Mm -hmm. If you do get bullied and you tell the person, stop it, please, you know, and the person doesn't want to stop it, then 
you, the next time he pushes you, you push back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they understand between your fighting versus the bullying at school yes. and how to sort that yes. out. Do you take them along when you go training and have them watch you and see uh, where it is that you go when it is that they're not with you? Uh, yes, I actually do take them with to uh, Warrior Sports. Um, that's where I train. And, um, and then I have them like do the... The Mondays and Wednesdays class. So but they train too? Yeah, they do too. Oh, lovely. And they love it. They love it. Um, so they also get taught like all the discipline and stuff that they, you know, the that goes into it. goes into it. Um, is he a liking to it um, because they like it? Or is it because mom does it? No, I think it's because they like it. You know, I never ever would let my kids do anything they don't want to do. So you know, there is days that I ask them, listen, let's go to the club because you know it's it's training day today then they would say mama i'm not in the mood for it today mm -hmm. or no you know what i rather want to swim then i leave them mm -hmm. i leave them mm -hmm. to swim or to do what they want to do you know because i i know how it feels to be forced into something that you don't want to do like my mom made me do ballet <laughs> and grade two and i hated it i hated ballet yeah and the more I told her I do not like the ballet, the more she wanted me to do it. I'm sure you were looking cute in your tutu and your ballet shoes. I was looking very cute, but my mom, the teacher actually told my mom, she said, you know what, your kid is not a ballet dancer. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's not going to <laughs> work. You know, I would rather you have your, her doing something else mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she, you can see she doesn't want to be Yeah, there. but not in your mom's wildest dream do I think that yeah. uh, what you're doing right now is the path that you would have taken. Yes. What do you want to do with this, Jackie? I mean, there's so much you have on your plate. You're determined. I can see that you're ambitious. You have a vision. Yeah. Share that with us. I actually want to go as far as I can with the fighting. How far can you go? I think the limitations is where your body, the, your body takes you. It says no more. Yeah. yeah. I think with the fighting, it's, it's, it's if your body tells you, you know what, I'm all bruised up, I can't, you know, ligaments are torn. You know, then that's the stage where you decide you can't anymore. Mm. And then also when uh, they tell you, you know what, we think you're too old for this now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but I wouldn't give it up until my body actually says, you know, what, you can't anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm taking good care of it. So I think I can go a while. So. Have you had an embarrassing moment? Embarrassing moments. Embarrassing moments <laughs> that you can share with us. Oh, goodness. Where do I start? You didn't leave anything <laughs> in the men's change room. Just an embarrassing moment that comes to mind where you're just like, oh. No, not actually. Not in this career. I haven't had any embarrassing, any embarrassing moments. moments. No. no. Only as a child, I had lots of embarrassing moments. But, yeah. But not, not yet. Now. Not. I think I'm too careful for that. <laughs> Too careful. Nothing wrong with that. But when you do, do let us know. I will. Yeah, when we Definitely. have you back. Uh, your next fight, when is that happening? Um, I'm actually supposed to fight on the 16th of December. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it though. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're waiting for confirmation from the opponent to say if it's on or not. But I really hope it's on because I am so ready. I've been training really hard. Um, with my sparring partner that's also fighting on the fight card. Um, so, and, you know, it's, it's very disappointing when you put so much effort into something and then you get told you can't um, have the fight, you know, then you, you feel like, oh, wow, well, I've gone so, through so much pain. I've gone through so many things. There's so many people that helped me get so far and, you know, it's been standing by my side and been being there for me, yeah. you know, and the coach is putting in so much work with you. And then they... So we're going to go out in faith and say that you are fighting on the yes. 16th of December. The minute that phone call comes to say it's on, yes. what is the first thing you do? I mean, is it mentally you start preparing? Physically, you're already prepared? Where do you start when you know a fight is on the horizon? Physically and mentally, I'm already prepared. Um, like I say, I wouldn't want not to be a fight. I want to fight. Um, even if they don't give me a fight, I'll get into the ring and make a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, the mental stage of it is um, 
But I... Oh, there's so many things going on in my head. Because mm. um, the, the mental strength and power, do you channel what it is you've been through? Um, is that sort of your de-stress when you get into the ring? Is that where your power comes from? I would like to think so, but you know, like I said, do you have a switch? When you get into the mm. ring, the mm. switch goes on and then it's like, there's nothing that's like... You can't hear mom cheering. You can't hear my it's mom like, cheering, yeah. you can't... Laser like, focus. You don't see the people around you. Um, I used to uh, say this in like one of my previous like interviews that what actually happens in the cage goes like dark like this yeah a blur. so all for me all i see is me and my opponent and then here and there you'll see the ref <laughs> but you don't actually see yeah. him so yeah. you just see the opponent and then you see these black mm, walls mm, mm. and nothing nothing else that. matters yeah nothing else matters you it's just you, know that your it's opponent. you and that opponent and uh and you've you got either ready for it yeah or you're not yeah. you know it's an amazing story that you have to tell, but to all our viewers watching who draw inspiration and strength from your story, having gone through what you have and, you know, just really wanting to carve a path for yourself and leave a legacy for your children, uh, what would your words of advice be? Never give up. Always keep on pushing. Doesn't matter what life throws at you, how hard things get, just keep pushing, just keep going. Never ever get to that stage where you say, you know what? I can't anymore, I mm. had enough. Never get to that stage. Tell yourself, when you feel like you're getting to that stage, you actually tell yourself, you know what, I am not. I'm not done yet. I am only done the day that I die. That's <laughs> the day that I'm done, but I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep on pushing. And we know you're not done, so good luck for the 16th, I'm gonna say <laughs> that. And we hope to have you back in the chair. Jackie, thank you thank very you. much for coming through to Wonder Woman in Sport. Thank you very much. More than welcome. <laughs> Jacqueline Trissier letting us in on her career as a fighter, an MMA fighter, as well as a personal trainer and a mom of two amazing boys ages 10 and 12. Well, that's a wrap from me, Romy Titus, and the team out here at Wonder Woman in Sport. Until our next show, cheerio.